I feel like in my life, your teachings have been amazing, your influence. So many things are going so well, but I'm still having a hang up with money. It doesn't flow easily. I feel the resistance. I've tried doing a lot of um, just different techniques like chilling out, letting it go, not paying attention to it. Earlier we were talking about the continuity of past and present and what's becoming, which is the same thing as to talk about momentum, which is the same thing as to talk about active beliefs that are giving way to new beliefs. And sometimes it takes a little while. You start generally and you understand the laws and then little by little, you are able to take the tough subjects and find new openings in them. But here's something that will help you a lot. Your inner being thinks exhilaration. Your inner being thinks choices, options, ease, flow. And can you see how when you think of those things, it doesn't activate the don't have enough money end. Can you feel the difference in that? Mm -hmm. That'll help you a lot because there is so much appreciation in you. We can feel it and ease and flow on so many subjects. And so what you're doing, you're just recalibrating this stick. You're just making this stick work for you because you've been playing with this stick your whole life in ways that it doesn't work for you. Right. I can feel that. And nobody can just all of a sudden, because we said so say, okay, I'm just going to look over here. No, you're not. You're going to look where your habit of thought is. Now you see this stick differently because things that are manifested by that, we mean the money in your bank account, your financial situation. That is a reality that you've been encouraged to focus upon every day. You, you got to know you can't spend more money than you've got, or you can't spend more money than your credit limit. And so it's something that you're aware of, but you're aware of it in a way that isn't serving you. It's like, we can't fix the subject of money at all. You know what other subject we can't fix? We cannot fix the subject of God. You've screwed it up too badly. <laughs> we cannot talk to you about God because what you think God is, we don't even want to put that label on it because every time that word is uttered, you offer a vibration that is so ridiculously nothing to do with this non-physical connection that you have. And so we've taken God out of our vocabulary for the most part. Have you noticed? We talk about source. We talk about vibration. We talk about energy. We talk about inner being. We talk about well-being. We talk about vibration. We talk about energy because when we talk about those things, you don't go, eh, 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 eh. But if we were saying God, you'd go, eh, because God has let you down over and over and over again. You've been praying and God's been out to lunch. <laughs> I have one other question on this then. Okay. So, my so before you go okay. there, let's just make sure we've nailed this down in a way that you're really getting it. Since we've taken God out of the equation and money out of the equation, and instead we're talking about things that are really easy for you to relate to, and therefore things that are very easy for you to find vibrational alignment with. Now you'll be tuned in, tapped in, turned on. That will work for you. This process will change your relationship with freedom, not money, with ease, not money. Oh, money will come because money is the very best way to facilitate all of that. It's so portable. It's so exchangeable. Okay. I'm with you. And so this part of it is a new dynamic. I've recently within the last three months attracted a new boyfriend who happens to be a multimillionaire. So I'm, it's, it's. Interesting though, because so now what's activated now she's picking up the end of the stick relationship <laughs> longevity <laughs> well, that's a, <laughs> Relationship that's a whole nother question, but it's interesting because it is another question. It's a whole nother question the Insecurity is insecurity if you were tuned in tapped in turned on Isn't your money problem sort of solved? <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, right that's but why are you not letting it be solved? Why are you uh, not letting the money that is flowing to you through the path of least resistance? Why are you not letting it in? What is stuck in your vibrational craw? 
And I wonder if it's like something from something my parents taught me or whatever. I try not to stay in the past, but it, I'm aware. What it is is you have this, I've got to earn it thing, yeah. but there's no earning. There's just attracting. The lottery is attracting. Marrying someone really rich is attracting. Stumbling over a pile of money in the ditch is attracting. <laughs> Finding a diamond ring under a bush is attracting. Robbing a bank, not so much. I get you. Okay, so yeah, and I feel that, that it's, yeah, okay, so I've attracted him, which is actually. So if you were really talking about this in the way that your inner being is, you would say, formerly I've kind of worried about money, but I kind of got my act together and I was vibrating on the other end of the stick and feeling really good about things and tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and the solution came. But I don't want him to think that I care about his money because I like him for him. So what's wrong with my deal there? I know, right? <laughs> well, what it is, it's all right, but you're just doing what humans sort of naturally do, where you're caring about what someone thinks, because you don't know what he thinks. You're just thinking about what you're thinking he's thinking about. So what he's thinking isn't messing up your vibration. What you're thinking about what he's thinking is messing up your vibration. So you're just doing the same thing with this boyfriend as you've been doing with money. You're focusing on it in a way that doesn't feel good to you and thinking that you need to adjust to it not feeling good it's never going to feel good we would like you to all get to a place where you're accepting that well-being is raining down on you and around you through the path of least resistance and that's always the way that it is that would be like you planting a garden and there's a mountain stream running by and you tap into it and you say to the vegetables in your garden newly planted i feel a little guilty about this water coming to us with such ease <laughs> maybe we should go through a few droughts together <laughs> because I don't want that water to think I'm taking advantage of it I question the ease with which this has come to me because I've trained myself to believe that I should struggle and suffer so then you want to ask yourself is this who this person is did this person come to you with an attitude of I'm just a wonderful wonderful catch and you must have suffered a lot to deserve me was there anything like that that came out of this person's mouth no nothing even close to that you're making it up you might want to figure out why do you know why can you tell me why? <laughs> it's because your idea of earning and deserving is all jacked up. <laughs> when you ask your parents for money and they don't have any, they give you an answer that stinks. They don't say to you, line up with it and it will flow to you because they didn't do it. So they say to you, money doesn't come easy and you have to really struggle and work hard for it. And you have to be deserving and you have to do well in the eyes of God. <laughs> right. And so you've just got some patterns of thought that are temporarily sort of tripping you up a little bit. Think about this question. Abraham, for a long time I've wanted blah, blah, blah. And now it's come to me, but I feel guilty about it coming because it came so easy <laughs> I, you're right no I'm with you it's true yeah I have to get over that that earning and I have to like work hard and like oh how could I just attract this multimillionaire and now I can have anything I want it came so easy let's focus on those words it came so easy what's wrong with that statement <laughs> everything is wrong with that statement what humans want to say is hard work struggle and sacrifice and then if you're really lucky or really particularly good maybe some abundance will come to you but not likely mostly you have to croak and when you get into heaven the good stuff will come provided you've been good so you've got all this stuff going on within you we're surprised that any of you let anything good in because you have this long practiced attitude of needing to prove your worthiness to a God we're choking on that word to source energy who's never asking you for the proof so when you set yourself up to prove yourself worthy to something that's not asking for the proof you just get all out of balance look at it this way abundance is raining down on all of you and it's like you've got umbrellas up not letting it in <laughs> and then somehow you get feeling a little better and you put your umbrella down and some of the delicious abundance rains down on you, you go, whoops sorry I'm used to blocking that <laughs>
it feels more virtuous to block it I shouldn't let it in it speaks to the money shortage consciousness that is rampant in your environment that most of you have been practicing for quite a while it's like you think that there's this finite pie and that if you take a big slice of it that you're depriving others of their slice of the pie but that's not the way this energetic pie this pie expands to the degree of your asking the pie is enormous if you could see this pie accurately it's the biggest 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 pie we, Esther can't find words to describe the infinitely big nature of this pie and as humans on the planet you're eating a slice out of it that's so infinitesimal we can't even find a measurement small enough to talk about it and you're worried about you taking too much of a pie that hardly anybody else has even dipped into at all and because they don't seem capable of dipping into the pie they're trying to get you not to either have you seen this pie no you haven't we've seen the pie we've seen the pie it's time for you to start cashing in your vibrational chips you see and what difference does it make through what Avenue it flows you say to your children most of them believe that their abundance flows through you because that's mostly how it starts out and then they get this warped sense of what they deserve because often they have parents that don't have a big flow flowing and so their parents teach them that there's no flow so that the kids will stop asking for things that the parents feel that they can't provide well wouldn't it be lovely if once you understand this if you could say to your child oh there's an abundant stream flowing and your flow doesn't come through me my flow comes to me based upon what I allow but your flow comes to you based upon what you allow and your abundance does not flow through me any more than your clarity flows through me wouldn't it be interesting if you said to your children oh you can't have clarity about that because I've been confused about it my whole life <laughs> so there's no point in you even trying to figure this out because I was never able to figure it out so you're not going to be able to too because the child would say hey you know I get my thoughts my thoughts come directly to me and so does your abundance it comes directly to you through the path of least resistance don't quibble with how it gets there don't rob a bank I see okay okay so to kind of bring this around then I've just been looking at it wrong because I was thinking it's like I wanted to be the one that created all the money for me and when he came it was like well that's his money but you're saying I actually attracted him so this is all part of the wait same. a minute so there are two ways that we want to describe this to you first is when you don't have enough money you ask for more money when you don't have a lover you ask for a lover through life you put many ingredients and the law of attraction has gathered the cooperative components isn't it nice that your lover is the person that has the money how do you think your lover would feel if there was some other man with the money <laughs> isn't it better that he showed up with the money <laughs> I have to explain to you I attracted a man with money and he's in my life he gives me money you're just my lover but the man with money is here too <laughs> well that'd be fine but it's not what you wanted and so that's one thing the cooperative components have gathered together and that's just a lovely thing the other thing that we really want you to think about is that as you put these ingredients into your vortex through your whole life and even before and the law of attraction gathers them together and brings the cooperative components together it is the picture that you've been putting together do you think that you were sitting around and intending we're just gonna play with you universe please bring me an impoverished lover <laughs> no <laughs> oh you didn't ask for that no oh really then why are you surprised that you have a prosperous lover mm, I'm not surprised I'm happy yeah about it. yeah yeah no yeah. I, 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 I I see the shift yeah yeah do you not believe me we do oh. <laughs> no, we do believe you we witnessed the shift during this conversation yeah yeah, yeah for sure we do believe you okay all right thank you do you like it that she's got a rich one yeah. see see if that feels really good to you you're under the influence of source if you're jealous you're not